Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish lock uh, out on the boat with my best boy James. Yeah. Right, looking at today, today is absolutely glorious, isn't it? We have just had six days of really bad weather. You wouldn't believe it, but yeah, it was absolutely terrible. So we haven't been able to get to the pots for a week. There's always a bit of a worry when you've had lots of bad weather like that, that the pots can get damaged, the floats can get ripped off, they can get jammed into the rocks. So yeah, today we're gonna to go and try and find our pots. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they are all in one piece. Because of all the bad weather, the clarity has absolutely plummeted. There's an awful lot of, I don't know if you can see it, an awful lot of suspended particles in the water and there has been a lot of seaweed ripped up. There is actually, there's been a big cliff fall over there. Yeah, so. Fingers crossed the pots are all all right. Are you ready, Captain? Yeah. Let's go. Well done, that'll do. Look at trees. Well done. This is not what we wanted to see. Now that, that's a lost pot. And that's just chafed through. That's in the bad weather. Nobody's taken it. It's just what happens in bad weather sometimes. Yep, just one fish. Um. <laughs> Unfortunately, and this is just what happens, this is just part and parcel of it, and with it being bad weather, I knew we were coming up to some rough weather, so I put the pots in slightly deeper water. <laughs> yep. So by fishing them in deeper water, it means they were slightly more protected from the bad weather. Come here. You're not going to get out doing that. We do have a very attractive male cuckoo ras. Oh, sorry, James. I already put it back. And in the other pot, we do have. One spider crab. A great big spider Two crab. spider crabs. And a tiny lobster. And a tiny, tiny, teeny weeny little lobster. Hold it. Come here then. Hold it, hold it by the back. Right, come on. Yeah. We toss it over there then. Good lad. Bye. Yeah, unfortunately in the bad weather, with it all racking around in the wave and the swell, one of the pots has been ripped off. But fortunately what I do whenever I shoot my pots, is a mark on the GPS, mark on my, on my, on my plotter exactly where I put them. So I have a lot long of the start and the end, and it was the first pot that went missing. So what I'll do is I'll contact one of the local diving clubs, and I'll give them that lat long. And I'll see if they can, next time they go for a dive, they don't mind dropping in and see if they can't find that pot for me. Because not only is it, not only is it money, it's, it's money that I've invested that is now sitting on the seabed and I can't get to it, but also that pot will keep fishing. It's called ghost fishing. Fingers crossed we can get it back. I'll do now is if I can't get that pot back the next time when I come out I'll bring a spare one and splice it on. Yeah. 
All I'll do is the next time I come out, I'll bring a spare pot with me and splice it onto that rope. And if I can get the divers to recover the other ones, I'll take that one up. It happens. There's a lot of weed growing on these ropes. Come out here and see what's in the pots, James. You finished your sandwiches, have you? Oh, yeah. We've already finished one of them, okay. like but I have my suspicions that these have been hauled I have my suspicions that somebody else has pulled these pots up and emptied them because they're about a hundred yards away from where I put them and not in the direction of what the tide would have taken them Stupid lobster that keeps putting his claws through the bars, so he's going to lose them. Yeah. <laughs> now, fishermen are superstitious, and people wonder why I, I tell them. Oh, well, I tell them off in the comments for going. Oh yeah, well, what about people hauling your pots? And I'm like, shut up. All you've done now is you've jinxed it. Well, this is this is what I imagine has happened with these ones. These have been out for a week with good bait on really good ground and have come back and we have one little one little um, undersized lobster that's lost both of his claws two little lobsters in this one and a couple of a couple of velvets in that one uh, edible crab. and an edible crab where's the edible crab right there oh good spot and they've moved now with the weather that we've having it could have moved could have moved down tide they haven't, they've moved across. So I think someone's pulled them up, emptied them and put them back. Unfortunately, there's scumbags in every walk of life. And I think we've been, I think we've fallen foul of them today, James. Yep, yep unfortunate. But not any them. Yep. I'll, I'll get the mischievous lobster. You'll get the mischievous I'll lobster. What this one here, look. Yeah, what he's done, silly sod, put his claw through the pot, got stuck, panicked, and chucked it off. Would you want to keep hold of this guy for a minute? Yeah, can I try and fix him? You can't, I'm not sure how you fix him, but a little edible crab. <laughs> chuck him back here. Good lad. Yeah, this one had a big ling skull and plenty of baiting. And it's just got one, two, three, four, let go, five, five little velvets and two tiny, tiny spider crabs. And this area here where I've been, this area where I've had this shot, has always produced lobsters in the past. So yeah, 
I think we've fallen foul to a to a thief, James. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, so one pot one pot lost. Three pots emptied. Undersized female. Let go. And a male. Yeah, how did you know that, James? A little undersized male. One little velvet. You can see these bait bags are well and truly, truly destroyed. And they've had dog fish in them, and dog fish lasts ages. So these pots, these pots have had stuff in them. These pots have had lobsters and crabs in them. And someone's emptied them. If we'd had one pot out of the three that was empty, and it wasn't the first one, you know, it was like the second or the third one, I would have suspected an octopus. But yeah, this this tells me someone's done it. I'm a squid. Yeah, I got these pots rebooted and shot back. There's a lot of weed on this one, James. A lot of weed on this one. James, these are heavy. These ones have moved as well. I had this fleet shot next to the other one, and I think someone's pulled them both up. up two pots at once. It's hard work. These have been... One of the ways that I know that these have been pulled up and moved is because they're in water. It's low tide now and it's in water that's seven meters too deep for the pots. Now I know I know how deep to work my pots because I work my ropes out so that I'm never lifting two pots at the same time. There's always enough space between the pots at low tide that I can haul them up and it'll be one pot in the water and one pot in the seabed. So someone's hauled these as well. Something quite interesting in that last pot. I'll get to that last. That is an interesting talking point for two reasons. But yeah. I would put money on the fact that someone has hauled these two fleets. They're very frustrating, but what can you do? Right, in this one, again, another little tiny one with no claws. Look. You can see though by those two little brown stumps that it's lost them claws a while ago. Do you want to come and throw this one back then? Uh, you good? Yeah. Come on then, chuck him back. Good lad. 
Now watch out the way so you don't get dirty. Yeah. I know that the weather and the tides, you shoot your pots in the direction of the tide. Tide goes that way or that way. So you shoot the pots that way or that way. If you shoot them across the tide, the tide can pick them up and roll them up in a ball. So that means that if these pots are dragged in the tide or in the weather, because the weather has been, well, the weather's been from the east as well. So the pots would have moved that way. They haven't moved that way. So yeah, someone has hauled these up, this fleet and the other fleet, and dropped them back down. And they've dropped them back down in deeper water, this fleet anyway. Finally, a nice keeper. That is a nice big lobster. That. Where, where's the buckets? Yep. Yeah. And this one that's making a nuisance of itself with only one half of a claw. He's lost the ends of his claw, that one. Wait, this little male. See, look, he's lost the tips. He's been, he's been in the wars, this guy, he's lost, lost a couple of legs, he's lost half an antenna, he's lost one claw and lost half of that one. So he's been battling. Little velvet, another little velvet. And a decent sized female edible crab that he's trying to be a nuisance. Yes, she goes. Now this crab is really clean. She's, yeah, she's, she's still partially soft on the sides. She has shed her shell not so long since you can tell because she's so bright, she's so pale. In fact, when you shine her up to the light, her claws are almost transparent. Yeah. Well, she, that's legal size to take, but because she's peeled so recent, there'll be no meat in her, it's just water. Sorry, Jim, she's gone. <coughs> If you want to see, you want to be down here where the action's going on, you don't want to be up there where the sandwiches are. I know why you're up there. You're definitely a kid of man. <laughs> Think with your belly. Right, in this pot, I suspect we have had a lobster and an octopus has eaten it. The reason I'm saying that is because we have part of an empty shell that has been chewed upon. But, other than the little velvet, the most special thing, and this, this makes the trip worthwhile, this. This here, this very strange looking character, is a sponge crab. See his little tiny pink claws there, look. You see it? Yeah. What he has managed to do is he, he has adorned his entire body in sponge. He's got little tiny bristles all over him, which is, it's almost like velvet on a velvet swing crab. And what they do is that makes a perfect habitat for sponges to attach. I'm gonna take some photos of that because that's, that's the first one of these that I've ever caught since I've been down here in Cornwall. I've seen it, I've caught them commercially, but yeah, that is a sponge crab. And that is really cool. They are really rare. <laughs> so a lobster and a sponge crab. Now what I have to do is I have to think about what to do with these pots. Because I can't leave them here because someone's just gonna come back and haul them again. I have to move them. Might move them a couple of miles down the coast. I'll rebuild them, sort all the ropes out, and I'll have a think about it. But yeah, that's what's happened with these last two flights. Someone's had these away. So one lost pot, some thieves, but a keeper and a sponge crab. Got to look at the positives, don't you?
Queen's home time. It's a hard life, isn't it? This guy in here. This little fella. He's just amazing, isn't he? You would honestly just think that was a sponge. Crappy little face. See how his claws all lock in, just locks in tight, doesn't he? Sponge crab and a lobster. Best friends forever. Best friends forever. Happy with that. I'm gonna get some photos of you. Little cutie. You alright up here? You had a little snooze? Yeah. Good lad. What is it you've got there, Liv? Sponge crab. It's cool looking, isn't it? Yeah, it's sponge. What's it feel like? Like a sponge. It's feeling a little bit bristly, doesn't it? Yeah. Are you gonna let him go? Bye bye, Spongy. Just, just like a little rock. Bye bye. Well, that was frustrating. Yeah, we've had someone pull up our pots. I am certain of it. Unfortunately, I mean, we've, done, we've been really lucky. We've gone all year without anything like that happening. We did lose one pot in the bad weather, which, well, we got off lightly there. And someone hauling them up. Yeah. Frustrating, but it happens. Got a nice lobster. Got a nice lobster to take back. Uh, James has just released that sponge crab. Let's go and clean the boat down and uh, see if we can't speak to Mark uh, with scuba diving guys. What well, is awake? I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. <laughs>